My subject is truth finding as an intermediate goal of criminal proceedings in and its limits. In our conference, we deal with questions of criminal procedure, especially with the determination of truth as a goal or more precisely as an intermediate target of the criminal proceedings. I want to start with truth and evidence. Finding the truth is connected with evidence. Evidence is the information used to prove the matters to be proven in a trial. The study of evidence, therefore, is the study of the process by which such matters are proved in court. The law of evidence is concerned with questions like, are there principles for the evaluation of admitted evidence? The next slide, please. Which party must present evidence in a case? What principles apply to the presentation of evidence in a court hearing? Questions like these form the basis for the discussion of the law of evidence. Second, truth and fact finding. Next slide, please. Yeah. Given the special position of criminal evidence, it is important to identify the considerations underlying criminal evidence law. The aim of the process is to establish the facts, or more exactly, to establish the truth. The concept of truth must be discussed in the light of philosophical discussion. In the words of Ronald Dworkin, people have a fundamental right not to be convicted of crimes of which they are innocent. The crucial question is how far the law of criminal evidence should go to protect the innocent from wrongful convictions. If one considers the innocent person's right not to be convicted to be an absolute right, in other words, if one seeks maximum protection of the innocent person, the prosecution should not be permitted to rely on a category which might include confession evidence. A general ban on such evidence would likely lead to widespread acquittal of the guilty and would therefore be regarded as unjustifiable. On the one hand, there is pressure to admit all relevant prosecution evidence. On the other hand, innocent people must be protected from conviction. A number of evidentiary principles are justified as ensuring the reliability of evidence. It is limitations placed on the admissibility of hearsay, uh, hearsay evidence. Now we have very short time, therefore I want to present 12 theses. First thesis, next slide please. First, the criminal proceedings serve to establish the truth. On the basis of the truth found at trial, the court decides on the crime and determines the punishment. The goal of criminal proceedings is to convict the guilty party. Establishing the truth is a necessary intermediate target for this. Second, the notion of finding the truth is not an absolute notion. It significantly depends on the type of trial. Truth in criminal proceedings is fundamentally different from the establishment of truth in civil proceedings. This becomes particularly clear if one compares the establishment of truth in civil and criminal proceedings. The indubio pro reo principle, judicial conviction of the truth, acceptance of consensual proceedings. Third thesis, truth in criminal proceedings is understood as substan substantive truth. It is not, as in civil proceedings, subject to the party's 
disposition. Fourth, the concept of truth is a fundamental one. This is especially the subject of epistemology and different approaches can be found there. Correspondence theory of truth, consensus theory of truth, consequentialist uh, concept of truth. This philosophical discussion is not held in law. In criminal law, one in intuitively assumes a conception of truth that corresponds more or less to the correspondence theory going back to Thomas von Aquin. Fifth, in the focus of the legal discussion on the establishment of truth are the legal principles classified by the 20th century German criminal proceduralist Zacharier as coagulated experience and I think this is important. The first principles to be mentioned are those that serve to establish the truth and exclude impending elements. These include orality and immediacy, limits of evidence by hearsay, exclusion of biased judges, etc. However, there are also legal principles not serving to establish the truth, but even making it more difficult, such as the right not to testify, the right to refuse to give evidence, the prohibition of torture, etc. These principles are indispensable in order to achieve a procedurally legitimized result in the process. Leg legitimation through procedure. Sixth, the raises, this raises the question of how, within the framework of the European Union, national criminal procedure codes and, in particular, the determination of truth in criminal proceedings are to be designed. The initial point must be, there is no process theory purely based on the philosophy of law sociological, psychological and cultural ideas as well as historical experience that have significantly shaped and continue to shape the criminal process existing in a state must always be included. It is questionable to develop a process theory based purely on legal philosophy as Louis Greco, a colleague in Germany from Berlin, seeks to do in his postdoctoral thesis. When the criminal process is shaped by psychological, sociological and cultural circumstances, as well as historical outcomes, these influences must be incorporated into a criminal process theory. Seventh. Nevertheless, generally valid statements about the determination of truth and truthfulness in criminal proceedings are possible and necessary. For this purpose, comparative law based on the different national legal systems provides a meaningful basis. Eighth, thus comparative law is gaining in importance to which our conference today is dedicated. Our aim is to examine different legal systems with regard to the determination and establishment of truth and to analyze the approaches to solving specific issues. Ninth, in this context, Concepts of justice and procedural guarantees found in the ECHR and the jurisdiction of the ECTHR as well as provisions in the <laughs> Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union must be included in the considerations as binding requirements for national legal systems. Tenth. 
these requ requirements must then be incorporated into the re respective national procedural systems in order for them to take effect and for the court's judgment to be recognized as a decision legitimized by a procedure based on the rule of law. National criminal procedures are historically developed systems that are oriented towards establishing the truth and at the same time take into account the rights of the persons concerned, especially the rights of the accused. External interventions in criminal proceedings based on the rule of law, better Rechtsstaatsprinzip, on the basis of e law or decisions of the ECTHR require adaption to the respective criminal procedure code. The criminal process system as a procedure legitimizing conviction must be preserved. Eleventh, trial impediments that affect the entire proceedings can be attached from the respective criminal process and determined independently. It is maybe in Eden, state of limitations, etc. And last but not least, number 12, the questions we are dealing with today are less subject to scientific discussion than questions of substantive criminal law. However, we should recall the experience that procedural law is usually more important than substantive criminal law. It is not uncommon for criminal procedural law to determine the outcome of the proceedings. Thank you for your attention. Good morning, everybody. So my topic is the same as Professor uh, Danneke uh, had, the truth seeking and the limits of uh, the search for the truth in criminal procedure. In the classical view of criminal procedure, truth-seeking is the waiting room of criminal justice. Without finding the truth, it is not possible to decide on criminal responsibility. It is no accident that the search for truth is the primary function of the criminal process across diverse legal traditions. But the naked truth in the criminal process is not complete. Yet, while searching for truth is a broadly accepted goal in the criminal process, no system seeks the truth at all costs. On occasion, the search for truth must yield to consider various aspects, which I would like to present shortly. First of all, Let's look at the characteristics of uncovering the facts of the criminal case, German Tatbestand. The general view is that the searching for truth is retrospective. It means that the criminal authorities try to investigate the evolution of criminal event that is complete. Uh, the methodology of such an investigation is to set up versions in this context, performance means that it is not an ambiguous evidence to answer the question of who's and why's. Finding the correct version sometimes takes a long time. The time distance can influence the uncovering of the facts of crimes. The criminal authority should use investigation tools defined in criminal procedural law and uh, use these tools only in the ways that laws prescribe. In the rules breach these regulations, it can have severe consequences to the criminal case and the criminal responsibility. The most universally accepted principle of truth finding is protecting individual rights like dignity, privacy, liberty, Many procedural rights developed in the process, the right to counsel, uh, to an impartial adjudicator, to confront adverse witnesses, to receive notice of changes, are generally consistent with an emphasis of accuracy. 
these characteristics means not only the basis of uncovering the truth in criminal procedure, but at the same time, the limits of truth seeking. <clears throat> Concerning the version's performance, it means that it is not an ambiguous evidence to answer the question of who's and why's. Finding the correct version sometimes takes a long time. The time distance uh, <clears throat> can influence the uncovering of the facts of crimes in the version is bad. The investigation runs in an incorrect way. The measures taken will be vain and mistaken concepts of committing crimes can lead to the wrong verdict. As far as the use of the tools of evidence, it happens oft that tools are not used correctly or these rules are breached. The interrogator uses incompetent interrogation technique. The interrogation protocol is incorrect. But it is also indisputable that certain individual protections, including the privilege against self-incrimination, the ban on double jeopardy, and the rules for exclusion of unlawfully obtained evidence may impair the search for truth. Under the influence of human rights ideals, countries around the world have come closer together in their willingness to adopt these protections and limit the search for truth when necessary to ensure fairness. Before finding the truth, there are further barriers. These barriers stem from the organizational characteristics of criminal justice. The organization of criminal justice everywhere in the world is a publicly financed institution where the functional costs are available only limited. It means that the functional costs are not enough to uncover and judge all crimes. This lack has twofold consequences. The one is that the criminal justice, police, prosecution services, courts, selects the cases from the point of view of significance. It means that the criminal justice gives full up the uncover of the facts of crimes. The second is that they try to find uh, new ways to judge crimes, limits uh, the chances of finding the truth, the rapid changes in the permanent staff, for example, in the police, when the skilled old foxes who bring the knowledge and experience with them as well, in consequence, uh, interrupting the smooth knowledge transfer. Self-education and truth-seeking can result in a high proportion of faulty products. The further characteristics of criminal justice organizations is uh, work overload. The permanent pressure to produce more output, which can negatively influence accurate and efficient truth-finding. Truth finding has systematic limits as well. Uh, on the one side, at least in Hungary, the criminal judge has no obligation. It is only a possibility to search for the accused person's guilt if there is no proposal from the side of the prosecution service. Shortcomings in higher education and institutional training limit uh, the chances of uh, tooth fighting as well. An excellent example from the Hungarian experience is that the police higher education, the protocol making or interrogation techniques uh, is in the curricula of the police academy, but gets not enough importance as it should get. The result, uh, as it appears to me, is devastating. The judges of the first instance criminal code uh, do not study how to reason the final judgment. There is why that the reasoning and the evaluation of evidence are many times incomplete. I would mention here that uh, the false and incomplete confessions or expert opinions cannot be filtered by judges successfully in many cases. And last but not least, I would like to mention plea bargaining which in the adversarial systems had been practiced for decades and accepted by courts since uh, at least at the uh, 1970s 
in inquisitorial system, it has spread rapidly since uh, the 1990s, as like in Hungary, overcoming long-standing resistance to trading with justice. So uh, these were uh, some EU points uh, which I think can hurdle the truth-finding in criminal procedure. Thank you very much.